Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, hopefully, uh, I, my color is back in my face. I realized when I did Prime News the other day uh, that I looked a little pale. I had a lot to do with the camera settings. I actually just messed with the settings, and now I think things look better. I don't think I look as blue as I usually do um, and stuff like that, and things look more natural in color, not so saturated. I think that's really what it was. It was oversaturated, and it led to um, colors not looking exactly true to life. Like I'm looking at this screen right now, uh, and just looking at the things in the background, that's exactly how it looks to me in real life, whereas before they looked a little faded or a little... Um, I don't know, sickly, almost like there was like this film grain over the camera. So hopefully um, I'm getting better at this and I picked the right setting. This is just one of the automatic settings on the camera. Hopefully I picked the right one. I don't really know. I turned a dial. Things happen. Um, but what I do know is that I'm going to talk to you about the Nintendo Switch today and some opinions that are going around about the Switch's library and the Switch's success because... As it's noted here, as you'll see on Reset Era, it says CNN is reporting that the Switch is a big winner on Black Friday. I read the whole CNN article, and uh, the general gist of the CNN article is that uh, the Switch dominated on Black Friday. It was the best-selling video game platform by far. It wasn't even close, and this is despite having things like a PlayStation 4 bundle for 200 bucks that had like The Last of Us Part Two and... Um, Spider-Man and something else bundled in as well. Uh, so, yes, Switch had a, an amazing Black Friday. We don't know Cyber Monday yet, but even Benji Sales on Twitter is out there saying, like, this is record-breaking for Nintendo. If you remember the third quarter last year, they sold almost 10 million units. Well, apparently, they're shattering those sales this year. Not a surprise. Pokemon, Switch Lite. It does appear that the red, uh, you know, new model of Switch is actually um, outselling the Switch Lite by a significant margin. It turns out the Switch Lite isn't maybe as popular as Nintendo thought it might be. Um, it's almost doing that 2DS thing where the 2DS is, is a thing that's sold, but the 3DS was always selling better. Uh, Nintendo maybe over, oversold um, how well the Lite would do, um, but that's, that's a conversation for another day. Um, what's important today is that the Switch is killing it this holiday, and uh, we're about to get some record numbers from Nintendo reported here uh, in a month or two. Now, um, what I thought was interesting going through this thread, because I do this, right? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a video game fan. I read comments. I read comments on videos. I read comments on forums. And I know not everyone likes Reset Era, and that's okay. I'm actually banned at Reset Era, so if I go to log in, then I can't even look at anything. I think it's weird that you can log out and look at things, but if you log in, you can't. Like, you could just make it so I can't post, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, I only say that because I <laughs> usually I use the, the dark... Um, version of their layout but i can't uh so everything's going along just fine people are just wondering you know about about all the the sales and they're just discussing it um but i was looking at the at the last page and some stuff has come up in this last page that's that, that's interesting this, this guy right here let me let me just go to his um post um there it is so i guess this is back on page 10 um, i'm gonna scroll up quick and just make sure because like i'm just gonna go through some of this stuff and, and respond to it and get your guys' thoughts on this stuff because a lot of the sentiments I'm reading in here, I've actually seen it quite a bit on, on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook. And I realize that, you know, us on the internet sometimes overblow our importance uh, when it comes to overall sales. This is why, I like, Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, is exploding in sales, even though on the internet, if you were just someone on the internet, you would believe these games are terrible and you shouldn't buy them. Uh, but the general consumer disagrees. So, Let's just go down. Um, you know, like this doesn't mean anything though. The family like nature of the Switch means that developers are not going to be interested in putting their core titles on it. The PS4 will have sold better without attempting to pander to families. In a true head to head fight without gimmicks, Nintendo loses every time. The N64, Nintendo GameCube, Wii U. It's only when they decide to sell to a younger audience that they can even hope of reaching Sony. Yeah, developers are interested in putting core titles on Switch except Assassin's Creed, Overwatch, Skyrim, Witcher 3, Doom. Doom Eternal, um, Diablo 3, how about Mortal Kombat 11, that was day and date, um, the list goes on and on and on, NBA 2K has been here every year, it's, it's interesting to see uh, what people actually think who aren't fans of Switch, or aren't fans of Nintendo, or, or don't own a, the Nintendo products, um, how they think that, 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 that Nintendo's success with Switch 
is built upon this notion that they are appealing to children. And when they appeal to children, that is the only time they find the kind of success that Sony gets with PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, to be fair, PlayStation has just been entered into the Guinness uh, World Record books, by the way, for uh, for being the best-selling um, home consoles of all time. Like, the combined sales of all of the Sony home consoles are now the best of all time at $450 million plus. Nintendo systems, even though they've been around longer, are only about, are about $323 million or so, uh, give or take. Obviously, we have to see how the rest of the Switch generation plays out. Um, because Nintendo's calling it a home console anyway, so it would count for the Guinness World Records. But, uh, yeah, Sony's been massively successful. There's no denying the success of PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and 4, and likely the success of PlayStation 5. There's no denying that Sony has found the right um, niche with teenagers and up in terms of how they target their exclusives and the deals they lock down with third parties, and plus how they build the platforms out and build the hype for those platforms. I mean, we all remember how they crapped on Xbox by talking about this is how you share games and then handed a game over. Um, so we all know that Sony's been really good at marketing. Their one flub was obviously the very beginning of the PlayStation 3 era with the pricing and the cockiness, and then they ended up making up for it anyways. PlayStation 3 is still to date the only home console they have sold that has not sold at least 100 million units. So uh, that is obviously um, a testament to how amazingly um, popular Sony's brand is and Sony's PlayStation system is, or platform. So... There's nothing to deny how, how awesome Sony does at targeting their marketing, knowing who their market is, and going after it. They've made mistakes along the way. Um, they've made mistakes this generation. But uh, overall, they do a really good job in marketing. They produce a lot of really good exclusive games, and they target the audience well. Nintendo is is a little strange because they have a reputation that doesn't match the player base. Um, Nintendo has a reputation of... Because their games are cartoony, because their games are often rated under, you know, rated E or E10+, plus, you do have some that are rated T14, you know, like a, like a Twilight Princess or something, but most of their games are E or E10+. Plus. They get this reputation that because parents would genuinely be okay with their children playing a Mario game or a Zelda game or even a Metroid game, right? Parents would generally be okay with that that their systems for kids see there's this general reputation of how, what games are rated the art style those games take the amount of violence and vulgar language determines who should be playing these games and it's strange because in the world we live in um having been a after school teacher um of elementary kids a lot of them had no interest in nintendo games uh they were playing call of duty they were playing Red Dead Redemption. They were playing games that they are not even remotely close. I mean, these kids aren't even 10, and they're playing these games that are hyper-violent, hyper-vulgar, and, you know, they're just not something that I find okay for my kids. Heck, I won't even let my daughter, who's turning 9 years old this month, play Fortnite. But Nintendo has this reputation where everything they make for kids. And my kids, by the way, I'm a Nintendo gamer, so of course my kids love Mario. They love Donkey Kong. They, you know, I got the Super Nintendo Classic system sitting right here. My kids were just playing it the other day. They love all those old school games. They love the new school games. They love anything. They love Splatoon and Mario Party. Heck, they, they're starting to get into Breath of the Wild a little bit. Like My kids like Nintendo games because I'm growing them up with those Nintendo games. But they also like seeing some of the other games, the Maddens of the world and the Call of Duties. And my dog daughter has watched me play Fortnite and stuff before and Overwatch and I don't mind if she watches but I want her to understand the context of what I'm doing and that just because you know, you're shooting someone in the game it's not real like this isn't what shooting a real weapon is like you know I'll take her to a gun range sometimes she really wants to understand because uh, it's a lot more scary than uh than clicking a button on on a controller or something but the thing is Nintendo's reputation is preceding them in in arguments like this um because I find, and this is just through my own research, Nintendo's published something on this back in 2017 as well, but I have found that very few children I meet own a Switch. Some of them want one, but they don't really own one. I find a majority of the people I bump into, and I am an adult, so of course I bump into a lot of adults, are adults that play Switch. 
I have a social media profile on Facebook where of the 300 plus friends on my Facebook thing, over 150 of them, all adults, own Switches. Um, Nintendo published data back in 2017 that said 92% of the Switch's audience is over 18. So I don't know how those numbers have changed now because kids always want the cool hip things that adults are playing. So obviously kids want a Switch because adults are, are, are playing it and they see it's really cool and they're hearing good things about it. But th this idea that Nintendo can only... Um, compete with sony by appealing to children is so strange to me because switch is doing the exact opposite i mean think of some of the best games this year on switch astral chain is that a, is that a game for kids I, that doesn't seem like a, a, a one of those games targeted towards children how about um even even mario maker too right like okay you could you can argue well yeah kids could play it yeah but the people that play it the most are adults or teens that are using their creativity to create and play amazing levels that are well beyond what most children can even conceptualize. Uh, that's what makes Mario Maker 2 have such a lasting power. Now we got that 2.0 update coming out that li literally lets you play as Link, which is just really cool, like not just a costume, like you actually are Link. I think it's really cool, and then that's going to add a lot of creativity to, to the level designs. And you see that, and that's like, that appeals to adults. You know, you see games like Fire Emblem Three Houses, literally rated teen and up. Like, it's not intended to be played by little kids. So we have that. That's one of the big, that's actually, the, I think, the highest rated game on Switch this year. And then, obviously, you got Pokemon Sword and Shield. We can argue till the cows come home that that does target children, because clearly there are a lot of children that enjoy Pokemon, from the anime to the movies to to the toys, to the Pokemon cards, to everything in between, right? Like, there's a lot of kids that do enjoy Pokemon, but that's not to dismiss the fact that it does appear, based on the Pokemon company's own statistics, that over 60% of the Pokemon audience is over the age of 18. So it's people who grew up with Pokemon, and they stayed Pokemon fans as adults. So, again, even though Pokemon is probably the biggest argument you could make for appealing to to a younger audience, it also appeals to adults, and it appeals to a lot of adults, as do a lot of the games coming out on the Switch. Like, what did Mortal Kombat 11 and it exploding in sales on Switch, what did that have to do with kids? I mean, that's rated M. According to people like this, those kind of games, you know, don't sell on Switch. Switch is only selling because it appeals to kids, and that's just, it happens to not be the case. Switch is selling for reasons that Sony platforms have sold for in the past. Um, I've talked about this in another video, but I'm also bringing it up again. The Nintendo Switch is a system that, that that corrects Nintendo's mistakes with Wii U. And what do I mean by that? I mean that there are multiple ways to make a system sell, regardless of what that system is. Um, but when you have all of those factors combined, that's when you have a hit. So one way to make a system sell is obviously having the platform itself irregardless of the games be appealing something about that platform needs to be appealing and this is the switch right here without the joy cons attached but as you can tell it is a tablet okay tablets are easily understood um it, it because it's a tablet it automatically makes it look like a more adult thing it's not like one of those nabby tablets that have you know the big giant bumpers on it this is the switch and then you attach some controllers to the side um, that is an appealing look for a platform an adult would like to play on because it looks a lot like we're playing on our phones with controllers. So adults are okay being seen in public with that kind of device. It has a certain, I don't want to say sex appeal, but um, adult-like um, attractivity to the actual design of the product. In addition, it's a video game platform you can play on the go, but dock with your TV really easily. Again, these are concepts. These are designs. These are looks that make Switch appealing as a platform and a system. This is before we get to games, UI, or anything else. It's just appealing on the front facing look of it and that does matter unlike you know don't judge a book by its covers a lot of people a lot of consumers do judge video game platforms on the cover i'll give you an example from this generation there's the xbox one versus the playstation 4 which system at launch the launch platforms looked better did the vcr looking giant xbox one look better or did the sleek with with with, with, with weird angles and slimmer uh, PlayStation 4, that was also cheaper, by the way, look better. I think we both know the answer to that one. PlayStation 4 had an appeal to it, an appeal to it that Wii U uh, with the giant 
Fisher Price looking tablet at the forefront of all of the advertising um, didn't have. And with the Xbox One, which was $100 more at launch because they bundled in Connect that nobody really wanted and made a VCR looking standard PC case box. Um, made people not really like it. They like the slimmer, sleeker design of PlayStation 4, and it just so happened PlayStation 4 actually was um, a more powerful platform at that time. So uh, there's a lot that can go into it like that. The, the other way to appeal is obviously launch lineup and games. Um, Nintendo uh, used maybe their most broad appealing uh, to teens and adult game they could in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild to launch the platform. Obviously, they've been killing it with exclusives ever since. 2018 was a bit of a down year, but they bounced back here in 2019. Um, and, and the product's just full of a ton of exclusives. Now, whether you think those games are good or not, that's up to the eye of the beholder. Uh, but all, every game they've released has essentially had this appeal to adults. And you see this when you go to events like E3, which I have been to E3 three of the last four years. And when you go there, you'll notice, obviously, that everyone at E3 has to be over the age, of, I think, of 17 or 18. I can't remember. But you basically have to be an adult to be at E3. So you're only interacting with fellow adults. And you'll notice that Nintendo games, whether it's Fire Emblem, whether it's Mario Tennis, has the longest lines of anyone at the show longer than than Sony who wasn't there last year longer than Xbox at Microsoft's theater and they do it at now longer than any of the third party companies with those more mature games you know like like Doom oh everyone wants to line up for Doom like I was there Doom Eternal did not have like this super long line not like Nintendo Nintendo's booth you could literally wait three four five hours to get into one time um, and why is that because adults love Nintendo Nintendo's main audience is actually people who grew up with Nintendo and those people are now all adults. So to act like Switch is a system that can only compete with Sony uh, when they appeal to children is a bit of a misnomer and it's a misnomer because the only you know other time they did that uh, was with Wii. And we did explode due to its popularity with families. There were, sure, there's plenty of adults and core, core gamers that enjoyed it. But in general, we appealed to children and families and moms and dads. So, yes, we competed by um, appealing to a broader audience. But Switch is competing at a more expensive price, by the way, this holiday. With, like, no games bundled in, except unless you got the Mario Kart 8 bundle. Uh they're competing with much cheaper systems that are more powerful from the competitors with, you know, quote unquote, better games because adults want the new hot device and they want the latest and greatest Nintendo games that they keep hearing all these good things about. So um, Switch is got kind of the double whammy of the games and the sex appeal. And uh, beyond that, I guess just the whole idea that it's got a lot of positive momentum a lot of positive word of mouth is going around about Switch, despite the the Joy-Con drifting and Ben Gate and um, you know what whatever you know issues you want to throw out there that are real and do exist. Um, Switch is navigating through all those waters because there's just more positive reception than there is negative. I think a vast majority of people that get Joy-Con drift don't even say anything to anyone. They just buy a new pair of Joy-Cons because that's what like we're accustomed to as consumers. Oh, phone breaks, get a new phone. Oh, your controller breaks, just go buy another controller. Like people don't think much of it, and because the Switch is modular, you know, unless the actual tablet breaks, they don't really have um, a, a lot to complain about. Most consumers, I think. Obviously, we've seen the complaints on the internet, but. Um, it is what it is. So now we're going to get to the post that I actually was here for, and then we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up. I know it's a longer longer form discussion video, so uh, we'll see how this does view-wise. Um, but uh, this guy, JCS, whoever he is, says, it's generally funny that you're deluded in thinking Nintendo is putting out AAA games this past year. Um, you know, when, when you think about Nintendo's published games from like Astral Chain, Super Mario Maker 2, um, Yoshi's Crafted World, I guess I can understand why you might not label that as a AAA game. Um, but, you know, you have Fire Emblem Three Houses. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, I can understand an argument why. Maybe it's more of a B tier than AAA. Uh, but still, there's obviously some AAA output from Nintendo this year. But anyways, uh, it says, Are you deluding to think Nintendo's putting out quality AAA games this past year? They put out a few titles in their key franchises, but most of them aren't so great. Fire Emblem Three Houses, by the way, has a Metacritic rating of 91. I didn't know people know that. It's like one of the highest rated games. It's like the second or third highest rating game to release this year. Just 
throwing that out there. This, I know some people don't care about Metacritic and the critic ratings, but I mean, that's a good barometer to see what the general populace thinks of a uh, game for that given year. Anyways, uh, I get that people like Nintendo, but no matter what you say, my Switch isn't being played because the content isn't there. Um, when it is, it's too expensive for what it is. And Nintendo are too arrogant to put it on sale regularly like everyone else. Now, um, to respond to that point, uh, this isn't to, to, um, to kind of defense force Nintendo. The rest of the industry does do rapid price dropping on their games. Uh, Nintendo doesn't because their games keep selling. Um, most companies would not rapid price drop their games if they kept selling the way Nintendo's games do. So what Nintendo has done is games used to not rapid price drop, by the way, they used to never be the case. And what Nintendo did is they said, why are we going to change our strategy that we used, you know, in the N64 era games didn't rapid price drop then? Why would we rapid rapid price drop with the GameCube and the Wii and the Wii U and the switch? Like why would we rapid price drop? We think our games are worth the money years later. Like is breath of the wild today is still worth 60 bucks. To some people would say, no, it's an older game. Other people would say, have you played Breath of the Wild? Hell yeah, it's worth 60 bucks. Some of us would spend, you know, 200 bucks again on the Master Edition or the Special Edition that comes with the little Master Sword trophy. Like, like people would still maybe pay that even to this day. So uh, people are paying more than that, actually, to get, get their hands on sealed copies of those now. So it's one of those situations where I don't... I, I get why the rest of the industry rapidly price drops, especially when we have so many annualized franchises. Like Call of Duty, it has to rapidly price drop. Madden has to rapidly price drop. NBA has to matter because there's a new one coming out every year. You're not going to keep selling and selling and selling that game at 60 bucks a pop when people know, oh, if I just wait seven months, if I just wait eight months, there's going to be a new one. Um, but Nintendo's games are generally pretty evergreen. Uh, so Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart and all these games, they just keep selling. So Nintendo isn't given a reason to lower the price. That being said, um, we saw this holiday season that Nintendo did lower the price. Um, while you've been able to get Breath of the Wild for 45 bucks or so on Amazon for actually quite some time, that was just Amazon dropping the price. Breath of the Wild was 40 bucks everywhere. Um, I, I get that it's 2017, but it was 40 bucks everywhere. So it was Odyssey. Um, we saw, you know, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. That's one of the best games on Switch. Fifteen bucks. We saw Starling Battle for Atlas, which I know is a, a multi-platform third-party game, going for five bucks with, with, with the with the with the uh, starter pack. So we were seeing high-quality games on Switch going for rather cheap. Some from Nintendo, some from third parties this this holiday season. So while Nintendo doesn't put their games on sale regularly, they don't because they don't have to. It's not about them being arrogant. Um, it's about them being smart business wise. I, as a consumer, I wish they would lower their prices like everyone else does, but I also know as a consumer, their games keep selling. And as long as people keep buying the games at those prices, why would Nintendo drop the price? Sony wouldn't drop it either if they could. These other companies are actually probably jealous that Nintendo's games can keep selling at 60 bucks a pop, that their games can be that evergreen. Like, everyone's trying to be the next Fortnite. Well, Nintendo does that with, like, every release where the game keep being popular. All Like, Mario Kart. I mean, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a Wii U game, guys. And that thing is exploding still years and years and years later. Because that, that's just what Nintendo IPs do. They have this uh, innate selling power for you. I mean, Breath of the Wild has sold over a million copies this year. In 2019, it's sold over a million copies. You know how many franchises wish they could do that? Two, three years later? Still sell a million copies at sixty bucks a pop. You know, not 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 because it reduced it to five dollars. At sixty dollars a pop, it sold more more than a million units this year. It's before the holidays. Probably might be at one point five to two million now. Isn't that crazy? Um, so it's not about arrogance. It's about smart business move. It's business savvy. They know they have games that are going to keep selling, so why lower the price? Everyone else lowers the price because the game stops selling. I, I think that's the disconnect between consumers uh, and the way that Sony and Microsoft and all these EA and all these companies handle things and then Nintendo because Nintendo just doesn't have a, the same reason to reduce the price as these other companies do. And the other companies are we sell a bunch in the first week and then boop, people stop buying it and that's why the prices go down. Um, which also can make people who bought it at 60 bucks feel like a sucker when a month later it's only $30, but that's not here nor there. Um, I want to use my Switch, but I don't because there isn't enough content I want to play, and that's fair. 
Anyone can anyone can have that opinion. Any system you buy could have content you don't want to play. Without AAA third-party support, you have to like lump four to five AAA-esque Nintendo titles that they graciously bestow upon you. It's funny because no one says that about Sony or Microsoft. Oh, they graciously just dropped some AAA-esque games on us. It's like, no, they're a video game company. They always make games. They've been making games for 30, 30 years more than 30 years really that's just from the NES. like they were making games before the NES even existed so i th this is just someone who's sour with nintendo and triple th a third party content is important it is and switch does have some of it they don't have it as much as i would like them to have uh, if you can't acknowledge that the switch library is anemic compared to other systems and this year's titles aren't all that great then we're not on the same planet the switch's library isn't anemic um, but if you are into AAA third-party games, then you probably should be playing, you know, on PC or um, Xbox or, or PlayStation or something. That's definitely true. If you if you love AAA third-party multi-platform games, then you should be playing them on the platforms that get those games and get them day and date and get the best versions with the best frame rate and the best performance and the best resolution. Um, yes, absolutely, go for that. There's nothing wrong with that. Switch isn't going to get them, or the ones it does get, they're going to get years later, um, and that's just the way Switch is. And they're going to not perform the greatest because the Switch factually is not as powerful as those platforms. So I think this comment, among others, um, just shows the massive disconnect between gamers, consumers, um, and people who are actually buying things. I think that there is a big disconnect in general with how people treat Nintendo. Um, I made a video on this a long time ago, but Nintendo isn't for kids. Um Kids are welcome into the Nintendo family, but Nintendo is now more than it's probably ever been in the history of the company for adults because this platform, this Switch, is the most adult platform Nintendo has maybe ever made. Um, and that's saying something for a company that's been making platforms for a long time. I know there's this theory that, oh, Nintendo was making an adult platform with the GameCube. Were they? It, was, it looked like a lunchbox with a handle. So it was like a purple lunchbox. Did that scream appeal to adult to you? Did uh, the Wii scream that? Did the Wii U? You know, you could argue the NES maybe back in the day, but again, adults didn't really play it. It was mostly for kids back then. So this is like the first platform Nintendo's generally put together that has appeal to adults. I mean, heck, people are already talking like, oh, what do they got to do with the next one? Just get rid of the bezels. Be more like our smartphones. Have no bezels. Like... <sighs> Anyways, folks, um, you guys let me know what you think about the, the sales of Switch this holiday, what you think about uh, some of these commenters on Reset Era, and just in general, some of the general opinions that are still going around to this day, that Nintendo games are for kids, they're not high quality, um, they're just, that the, the Nintendo makes systems for kids, and that's the only way they're successful, I, I just... I want to have this conversation and debate down in the comments. Anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jets from Nintendo Prime. I'm sorry this video is so long, but you guys know I love talking about stuff. And uh, this felt like a great topic. I was going to stream it, uh, but I decided a standalone video might be best for this one. Uh, we, we can address uh, maybe this further in a future live stream later this week. All right, folks. I'll catch you in the next video. Like, subscribe. See you later.